Hey, what's up, peoples? Hard Leg Joe here with the profile for my Rod Dolce deck, which is really just a fairly standard Madolce OTK, but we're playing the Winged Dragon of Ra, which we can summon off of Sphere Mode. This makes the deck about 8% less effective, but 80% more radical, which is what I'm all about. Going over our deck list, we've got... One driver, one chicken, three balls, plus a triple Mufasa and a pudding says y'all. Two mess and gelato, triple lollies to boot, four witches, some jellies, and a cakes that hoot. Triple waffle kitties and some G's to go with it, plus we play three lightning storms and a single Madolce ticket. Triple double summons and a house that slaps, three staples and two nades to round out the traps. Yeah! Oh, and we also have an extra deck, which includes Exiton Knight 2, CHOCOLATE, a Metal Hornet, God Save the Queen, me, anytime before noon, Exiton Knight 1, Dem Hips, the OTK Machine, a Frito, a City in Arizona, and a couple of Pop-Tarts. The side deck I'll go over in a bit. So, Medulces are kind of a weird deck mechanically. All of the main deck monsters share the same effect, which is, if they're destroyed and sent to the graveyard, they shuffle themselves back into the deck. This effect doesn't really matter. I mean, we do have some cards that are meant to synergize with it. For example, Ticket says, if a Madolce is returned to your hand or deck, you can search a Madolce and then summon it if you control a Fairy-type monster. Which is nice and all, but since this is an OTK strategy, your monsters are rarely going to have a chance to be destroyed. Instead, we trigger things like Ticket by using other card effects to shuffle Madolces from your graveyard into the deck. I guess if they have a theme, it's that? Shuffling cards into the deck as cakes are off to do? The theming doesn't really make any sense. Anyway, in addition to that strangeness, all the Madolces have additional effects, most of which are to summon Madolces from the deck or search Madolces from the deck, which helps you build up resources to summon Queen Tiaramasu. This Regal Rectum Wrecker has some of the best removal in the game, allowing you to detach one material in order to send two cards your opponent controls back into the deck. This does not target, meaning that ye old cake boss can easily remove modern nightmares like Dragoon of Red Eyes. Of course, just making this on its own won't win you the game, which is why modern Madolce decks use long and complicated combos to summon this alongside a bunch of other stuff, which can all be done using one card. Allow me to demonstrate. So the card you need to get everything going is this one, Petting Sessor. If you have no monsters in the graveyard, you can special summon it. And if it's special summoned, you can summon another Madolce from the deck, but lower its level by one. You will pick her older sister, who is normally level five, but gets lowered to four by this effect. Using the two of them, you can summon the Madolce Teacher Lady. Go ahead and put her right over here in the corner. She can detach to target a Madolce and make it immune to monster effects for a turn. That can be good if you're going first or something, but in this case, we're just using it to get a Madolce in the graveyard. Now, when you do detach, it's very important that you don't choose Pudding Sis, for reasons I'll get into soon. You want to choose this one and just target Teacher or whatever. Now, Teacher also has a second effect that says when a Madolce is sent to the graveyard, you can shuffle up to two cards in the graveyard back into the deck. In a game where you're going second, you sometimes want to activate this now in order to get rid of your opponent's graveyard resources, but since we're the only one with monsters in the graveyard, we're just going to say no. Anyway, now that you have a Madolce in the grave, you want to summon Chocolate Pudding Sis, who can be stacked on top of any rank 4 or lower Madolce Ixie. Coco Puff has two effects. The first one says, once per turn, you can shuffle a Madolce in the graveyard back into the deck. The second one says, if a Madolce gets shuffled into the main deck, and you have Pudding Sis attached to this card as material, you can detach a material and summon a Madolce from the deck. That's why you need Pudding Sis. Anyway, you'll want to detach this and use it to summon Angeli from the deck. This thing can tribute itself in order to summon another Madolce from the deck. You'll want to use Hootcake. Hootcake can banish a Madolce in the graveyard to say it with me, summon a Madolce from the deck. In this case, you're gonna want to banish Teacher and use this effect to summon Messengelato. 
This guy says if he's special summoned and you control a beast type Madolce, which Hoot Cake is, by the way, you get to search a Madolce spell trap. You do that thing and you get yourself Madolce Chateau. When this is activated, all Madolces in the graveyard get shuffled back into the deck. And oh hey, did you think that chocolate was once per turn? Because it's not! Since a Madolce was shuffled into the main deck, you can detach and summon another Madolce from the deck. In this case, another copy of Messengelato. Because guess what? He's also not a hard once per turn. Use his effect and get yourself Madolce Ticket. And then go ahead and activate it, because why not? Anyway, now that you have your two level 4 messengelatos on the field, you can use the two of them to make Queen Tierra Masu and clean up whatever's left of your opponent's board. I can't actually use her effect now because my opponent has nothing on the field, so you'll just have to use your imagination for this final part. Now, I didn't mention it before, but her effect does actually have a cost. You have to shuffle two Madolches from your grave back into the deck if you want to spin two of your opponent's cards. Fortunately, you already have one there, and you'll detach the other one as cost. Then, Ticket activates, letting you summon another Madolce from the deck, since you control a Fairy-type monster. All the Ixies are Fairy-type, by the way. Now, already we have 7,700 damage on board, so if your opponent's field is clear, literally any Madolce will give you game. But if you need to attack over something, you can summon the Pudding Sis you just shuffled back, who gains 800 attack when there's no monsters in the graveyard, which will bring her up to 2,300 with the boost from Chateau. With that, you'll still have game, as long as your opponent has 2,000 or less attack on board. So let's go back to the profile. Remember that all of that was done with one card, and that card is searchable, so you essentially have six copies just right off the bat. You can also get things going if you open with Angeli, since she can go into Hoot Cake and Hoot Cake can summon her from the deck, though you won't have full combos since these two are hard once per turns. Uh, hell, even Hoot Cake by himself can do the combo as long as you have another monster in the grave to banish which is why we play him at 3, despite the fact that he can sometimes be bricky. My point is, because one starter can get you game, and because we have so many ways to access that starter, you can fill the rest of your deck with Go Second Board Breaker cards and Extenders, which is what the rest of the deck is. Uh, starting off with our Extenders, the best one is easily Salon. This is a continuous spell that allows you to normal summon a second Madolce every turn. If your opponent has Negate, you can sometimes bait them out with a normal summon of Angeli or Kitty, then slap down Salon and normal summon the Magilene that you actually needed to resolve. And if your opponent doesn't have Negates, then this is just free advantage, allowing you to normal summon whatever else you drew to go into the Link Monster or a second Tierra Masu if need be. And that's not even covering the second effect, which says, once per turn, when a Madolce is shuffled into the deck, you can set a Madolce spell trap straight from the deck, which can allow you to get your Negati trap just in case you're unable to OTK. I won't go into this because you don't really need it for the deck, but it can be worth it to play too, just in case you brick or get disrupted or you have to go first. It's pretty good and playing two allows you to recycle them. It can negate any card on the field while returning Madolches to your hand, which can trigger a lot of your effects. Uh, I guess I didn't mention that, but in addition to everything else the field spell says, if a Madolche would be shuffled into the deck, you can add it to your hand instead. So a lot of the effects, like Ticket that trigger when a Madolche goes to the deck, also trigger when they return to the hand. The more you know. Anyway, the only other extender we have here, and the most controversial one I'm sure, is Mewful. This just says, when it's normal summon, special summon a Madolce from your hand. A lot of players don't bother with this one, but I like it as an extender, and as a way to bait out negations when you're holding on to Salon. Also, since it's a beast type, it'll sometimes let you summon Messengelatos out of your hand, which would otherwise be bricks. Anyway, all that leaves us with is our Go Second board breaking cards, which are pretty simple. Since you need no monsters in the grave to activate the wee little lass, you don't really want to play traditional hand traps like Ash or Valor. That's why we went with Impermanence, which is a literal trap card, and Gamma, which banishes itself from the field at the end of the turn it was used. We also need our battle phase to OTK, so Lightning Storm is the preferred board wipe over things like Evenly Matched. 
Zoo King Alpha is a new addition, people are calling it the new Pankertops, and going second it fulfills roughly the same role, allowing you to get big number on board, which also serves as removal. It can bounce any number of beast monsters, including itself, to return the same number of monsters to your opponent's hand. This is good on its own as single target removal or bait, but it also has some additional synergy with Medulces, since we do actually play some other beast type monsters. Uh, all the more reason to main deck three kitty cats, since it can get you a second bounce while putting something like Angeli on the field to do your combos afterwards. Uh, finally, since Pudding Sessor doesn't use your normal summon, and we have spells to give us an additional normal summon, we main deck three raw sphere mode, which, if you somehow don't know, can normal summon itself to your opponent's side of the field by tributing three of their monsters. It can't be targeted by effects or attacks, but... Tierra Masu doesn't target, so if you combo off, you can just spin it back to your own deck for the OTK. Of course, sometimes you open with just Sphere Mode and no Princess or Salon, in which case you just gotta hope that removing three monsters and using your other hand traps is enough to stall until next turn. In a competitive environment, this usually won't be enough, which is why a lot of Madolce players opt for Kaijus instead. But online, this works fairly well, which is why we can play the one-of copy Wing Dragon of Ra. You see, at the end of your opponent's turn, if Sphere Mode is still over there, it comes back to your side of the field, at which point you contribute it to summon the Wing Dragon of Ra from your hand or deck and give it 4,000 attack. It doesn't happen very often, but boy howdy is it funny when it does. This thing can be kind of difficult to deal with on a simplified game state. Anyway, all that leaves us then is the extra deck and the side deck, which are nothing really special. The extra deck, mostly just a toolbox of rank 4s and links. Feel free to play whatever. The Medulce link is pretty good protection going first. You probably want to play at least one copy. It can also sometimes be useful for getting cards into the graveyard, but you don't really need it which is why a lot of people opt for Pot of Extravagance. I wanted to try to make some of these nuttier things so I didn't play it, but most people play Pot of Extravagance and just hope they don't banish all three copies of something. As for the rest of the side deck, it's mostly cards I'd recommend if you know you're going to go first. I originally started this out as a go first Medulce stun deck, which works better than you might think. Promenade is a pretty good Omni Negate. It's searchable. They also have a searchable counter trap. Having all your spell cards on board gives you a pretty solid resource loop that Teacher and the Link can then protect. Using all these resources together, you can usually stun your opponent for a turn going first, and then follow that up with an OTK. All you need to do is remove all the going second cards, things like Lightning Storm, Zoo King, Ra, Gamma, and replace them with all the stuff in here. Called by the Grave to stop the hand traps, Pot of Extravagance for more draw power, and a couple additional Medulces. I don't have time to go over the Go First combos in details, but they're not too different from the one I showed you earlier. Just focus on summoning Messengelato over and over again in order to search all your traps, and then end with a Pudding Sis on board, which will make this more powerful. Maybe if this video gets enough views, I could do a dumb dex on the go first version of Medulce. For now, though, I'm going to call it here. There's my deck profile. If you want to see it in action, check out the main What a Deck video linked down in the description. Otherwise, like the video if you liked it, subscribe for more deck profiles, and ring that bell if you want to be notified when they go live. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, good luck and have fun.